For a while now, the word digital has been slapped on so many things that it's sort of become a marketing buzzword to convince people that something is high tech or better in some way. Of course, most modern electronics are digital by definition as opposed to analog. But what do these terms even mean and is digital necessarily even better? For a long time, most consumer electronics like televisions and cassette decks worked by using analog signals, which you can think of as being similar to one of those wall clocks with a perpetually moving second hand. Just as the second hand continuously moves to represent the time, analog signals use some type of thing that's constantly changing to represent data. For example, both AM radio and old school broadcast TV use a signal with a continuously variable wave height or amplitude to represent sounds or visuals. These sorts of analog waves can be decoded or demodulated fairly easily with diodes that can relay actual data to a screen or a speaker. But as any child of the 1980s who grew up watching rabbit ears connected TVs or dubbing cassette tapes knows, a massive drawback to analog tech is the possibility of interference. The variations in waves that encode analog data are so small that interference can easily disrupt the analog waveforms and cause snow on your TV, static on your radio, or even problems with monitors that use older VGA cables, which are actually analog despite most other modern computer components being digital. Digital technology attempts to solve this problem by encoding and transmitting data as clear-cut discrete units, namely ones and zeros, instead of always changing waveforms that are super sensitive to interference. These ones and zeros are actually just representations of electrical signals being on or off. When you view it on a square wave, that's either up or down. These positions are easy representations since any piece of a square wave can only be read in one of two states, on or off, up or down. They aren't nearly as vulnerable to interference, making digital transmission normally a heck of a lot more reliable across longer distances, which is why the length of speaker wire in your home theater matters, but the length of a digital HDMI cable usually usually doesn't, at least not for resisting interference. And since digital data is stored as an exact finite set of ones and zeros, it can be perfectly replicated anytime you need to make a copy, unlike analog recordings that degrade over time due to the difficulty in duplicating an analog wave at every single point. This is the reason that an MP3 copied to a million iPods will sound the same on every one, but a cassette tapes that are copied a whole bunch will eventually sound like garbage after you dub them enough times. But even though digital has obvious advantages, we live to a great extent in an analog world. Take the sound, for instance. The sound waves that come out of your mouth when you talk are analog in nature. So how does a singer record albums that are stored digitally on, say, a Spotify server? Well, digital recording primarily works by sampling instead of recording all of the infinitesimally small changes in an analog waveform. An analog to digital converter takes snapshots of analog sound or video and stores them as digital bits. This is typically done many times per second with higher sampling rates resulting in more data and usually better quality, allowing a digital recording to achieve pretty close fidelity to the original performance while taking up much less space on a disc. Of course, since you can't exactly hear ones and zeros, digital recording sound needs to go back through a digital to analog converter or a DAC, which will convert your MP3 or AAC to an electrical signal that has a constantly changing voltage that the drivers in your headphones will turn into actual sound. So while digital tech has been extraordinarily useful, it's really the way that digital and analog work together that makes the brave new world of tweets, Netflix, and dank memes possible. Speaking of digital things, Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks, with more than 180,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. Audiobooks are a great way to listen to something while you're, say, in transit on your way to work, or just trying to run around the track at school and you're super bored and whatnot. Anyways, the, the physical activity, whatever, at least you can listen to a book. For our audience members, however, Audible is offering a free 30-day trial. Just check out audible.com slash techquickie and browse their over 180,000 audio programs. I would yet again recommend the entire Harry Potter series. There's a ton of different gems in there, and there's going to be the movies coming out in I'm Not Entirely Sure, which will have more stuff in that realm. They're not based on the original series of books, but they're based on books within the books, like Inception, 
books. Maybe I shouldn't reference another movie when talking about a single movie. Either way. Don't forget to get a free 30-day trial at audibles.com slash techquickie. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, dislike the video if you disliked it. Put a comment down below with something you'd like us to check out in the future. Check out Channel Super Fun. They did a video on little mini drones and doing cool things. I wasn't there for it. I wanted to be, but I was like literally across the entire country. So that didn't really work out. Don't forget to subscribe to Channel Super Fun if you liked that video. And subscribe to TechQuickie if you liked this video.